Did the Rockets win this game or did the Thunder lose it? The Rockets, I mean Rockets. The Thunder lost this ball game. Skip, they were the best team in crunch in clutch situations. And the previous games that they won, they won those games in clutch situations. Nobody was better in clutch situations than Chris Paul this year. Mm. And for whatever reason last night, they weren't good. Uh, you look at it, Skip, they went one for nine with, one for, uh, with four turnovers in the final four minutes. Chris Paul missed a bunny. He's in the lane five feet from the basket, and he left it short. Mm. Dennis Schroeder earlier, Skip, he missed two point-blank layups. Mm. That's not like them. Those are the shots that they were making in the previous games that they had won. Mm. And Chris Paul took one shot in the final eight minutes, Skip, mm. after making three of his shots and two of them were threes? Mm. That's what Chris Paul... No, no, come on. Mm. Skip, in a game in which Lou Dort <laughs> gives you 30... You got to win in a game in which he gives you 30 and James Harden struggles on the offensive end like he did. That's a game you got to win. You got to win that game. All you wanted to do was give yourself an opportunity late in the ball game. They yeah. didn't blow you out. It wasn't a situation you were trying to play catch up for the entirety of the ball game. Mm -hmm. You were right where you wanted to be. I guarantee you, if they if the OKC Thunder was drawing this game up, say, how would you like for it to play out? Just give us a chance mm -hmm. with the last five minutes in the ball game. That's all we can ask for. Billy Donovan, that's all he wanted was an opportunity mm -hmm. to be in this ball game late in the ball game. And it was right there for them for the taking. And they, they, they let it go. They let this ball game go. There's no other way around it. I tell you what I did like. I like a guy, Skip, that when he's struggling on the offensive end or struggling in any aspect of his game, he finds another way to impact the ball game. And in years past, I'm not so sure James Harden would have done what he did last night because those three block shots, those steals were big considering that how poorly he had played offensively. But Skip, the Thunder lost this ball game. There's no other way around it. They go one for nine, four turnovers in the final four minutes when they've been as good as anybody in the NBA in those situations. Mm. What hurt them the most, Skip, was turnovers. And if you go back and look at it, normally they pounded Houston on the glass. Houston turned the ball over. Mm. Well, if Houston's going to stay close to you in the ball game as far as rebound, and you're going to turn it over, this is what this is what happens. Mm. And they lost this ball game. But the Thunder gagged this one off, Skip. There's mm. no other way around it. Gallinari had made how many? 57 straight free throws? And what did he do? Cover it. <coughs> Spit mm. the bit. Mm. Chris Paul should have taken that shot because he was 6-6 six six in the ball game, Skip. He's a 90% free throw shooter. I understand Gallinari had, had made 57 straight. But let me ask you a question. 29 in a row in... In this play, in these playoffs. Yeah. But let me ask you a question, Skip. How was he shooting the ball last night? How many in a row did he make last night? We're not talking about... See, see you want to talk about, oh, he did this, he did that. Last if, night... If you were the coach, you're sending I'm Danilo like, Gallinari I'm like Chris to the Paul. line. I'm like Chris Paul oh, shoot that shot. stop it. Skip, the man is That's 90%. That's the easiest hot 2020 hindsight I have ever heard in the history ask, of undisputed. Ask Steve what 59 I... 59 in a row? It's absurd. Skip. How was he playing last night? I don't care. See? How was he playing last night. And they, that's so why you're going big home. Big shots for this team. When he, I'm, I'm talking about last night. Oh, stop. It. I'm talking about last night. See, you keep going, but see, that's the thing. You like to dig up the past. Well, he did this, he did that. We're talking about it's right the now present. in the moment. I'm digging up the present. And how did he play? 59 in a row? Okay. You're okay. kidding. There's how, no way. How if many, you're sitting in the, Billy Donovan's seat, there's no way you say, uh, Chris, you go shoot this. Can I ask you a question? Stop it. How was he playing last night? That's all I'm asking. How was he playing last mm. night? Did you notice of all the people that played in the game last night, he had the lowest plus minus. Mm. Excuse me, highest. He it was in a bad way. He was minus 16 yeah. in 27 minutes. Go ahead. I am going to take nothing away from the Houston Rockets. They won this game in all the little big ways. They've been winning lots of games this year since they went small. I have told you again and again and again and again and again, the Rockets now play defense. The Rockets now disrupt you with their amoeba zones and their, their small ball scramble defenses where they all play all five positions. And guess who leads the playoffs to date in forcing turnovers? Oklahoma City's turned the ball over. It's because they're getting it turned over by the Houston Rockets. If you look at, at th this team right now, who like in the playoffs so far, Covington is third in deflections. James Harden is fifth in the playoffs in loose balls recovered. Who in the, the, the history of the NBA could have imagined James Harden 
who, who can just fat cat it. That's his reputation, that, that he's not going to try hard. He's going to play no defense. He's fifth in the playoffs so far in loose balls recovered. And P.J. Tucker leads in the playoffs in charges taken. That's how they're beating people with their defense. Last night, they clamped down on the Thunder down the stretch, and this was the clutchest team in the NBA, and they were having a hard time finding a shot over that stretch that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And all I know is that the shot of the game came from the least likely source on the Rockets. And you got to give credit to P.J. Tucker. Yeah. And if you look at, at the box score, <laughs> what, what did he do for the game? P.J. Tucker has five, a grand total of what, five points. two of eight. He has five <laughs> points. But look at that. He had nine rebounds, yeah. and he had four steals. Mm -hmm. But he had one shot that won the game. Mm -hmm. With 125 left, what had Shea Gilgis Alexander just done? He had escaped wide open to the corner. They had found him, and he had buried the three right. that suddenly put, wait a second, the Thunder are up. Right. So the Thunder up. I love that expression from back in the day with, with obviously Durant and Westbrook and my hometown of Oklahoma City. Thunder up. And all, all of a sudden, Houston comes down to the other end, and if we could see this shot that P.J. made, they run him off the three-point line because all he does is shoot corner threes. Yeah. That's, that's all his whole Let life him. is corner threes. And, and uh, Stephen Adams made a run at him, and he wow. goes up and under, up and under, and, and watch this from James Harden, up and under. That's a hard shot. It's a little 12-foot yeah. running You don't jumper. expect it. How, how many of those that he shot in the whole year? Because I, I checked this out. It, during Three? the year, he, he, he attempted 299 threes. He, he attempted only 127 twos in the race. So only 30% of his shots in the regular season were from two point. Right. And that's a running jumper where you're kind of going toward the basket. basket right. And it's a touch shot that, that's not in your repertoire. So you're like, how do I do this? Do I just barely do it? How do I, how do I just gently leave it just over the rim? He swished it. Yeah. They never relinquished the lead from that point forward. Right. So then we come down to the play of the game that you mentioned for the Oklahoma City Thunder, and Chris Paul has had a, a sensational <laughs> year. He has led in clutch points. I got it. But he creates for himself an eight-foot wide-open jumper in the lane. Okay, this is it now. This is, this, this is for the lead. And to your point, he kind of short arms it and doesn't even get it up on top of the right. rim. It, it's so short, it just bangs off the front right. of the rim. And, and that's basically going to be the ball game, which brings us... If you give Chris Paul 10 of those shots, how many do you think he makes? Game seven, <laughs> 44 seconds left. I don't know. If It's all about circumstance. Chris Paul's never played in the NBA Finals. Oh, okay? it's all about circumstance. Uh -huh. But you want Gallinari taking that free throw game seven. 59 in a <laughs> row? That's absurd. <laughs> it's just absurd. Okay, so it had been the Lou Dort Memorial game. I love Lou Dort. I have tweeted about him before. I, I have said Sam Presti strikes again. Chip off the block of R.C. Mm -hmm. Buford in San Antonio. Right. Sam Presti is always, like R.C. Buford, finding that guy that nobody else seems to know about. Right. So Lou Dort played one year at Arizona State where James Harden obviously played. Mm -hmm. And what did Lou Dort do in his one year? He was the Pac-12 freshman of the year. And he made first team all defense Pac-12. He made second team all Pac-12. He was not defensive player of the year. Okay. So, so wait a second. He went undrafted and the Thunder stole him and they sort of stashed him in the G League for right. much of this year. Not much, but a part of this year. And all of a sudden, the first time I saw him play, I said, that kid can play. He built like a football player. He's though. a strong safety. He's 6'3", <laughs> 220. In all the years I have watched James Harden, a revolutionary, game-changing mm -hmm. offensive player, I have never seen anybody defend him better than Lou Dort defends him. I believe they have played against each other at pickup games yeah. at Arizona State offseason mm -hmm. because, obviously, they both went there. Right. And there's something about this kid where he beats him to the spot every time. James Harden can't get past him. Right. James Harden can get past anybody. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the threat of the step back three, he puts you on skates and he beats you right-handed or left-handed to the basket. 
and Lou Dort will not let him get an inch either way. Right. I've never seen he, He's doing it with stoutness and quickness right. because he's so wide. James is like, I can't find a crease. Yeah. I, I, he's beating me to the spot every time. Right. He's heading me off at the pass and every he, time. He, he slides well. He has great lateral movement, Skip, but he, at 220 pounds, yeah. he's not easily dislodged from his spot. Ooh. And so that's what James normally could do. He could normally get separation, dip his shoulder, and the kid is right there. Like I said, he's built like a football player. Okay. He's not. You look at his shoulder, that's, those are not basketball shoulders. Nope. So – Lou Dort was also dominating the game on the <laughs> offensive end. He was. And, and just for the record, in this series so far up to last night, he had shot seven for 38 from three. That's 18%. D during the regular season, he was a 29.7 uh, three-point right. shooter. Yeah. Okay, what's the game plan going to say about Lou Dort? Uh, let, let him it, shoot. Yes. Let him shoot. And Lou Dort has the highest arc of any three-point shooter in the league. He just launches these, these moon balls. And last night, who knew? It's going in or he's missing by a mile. <laughs> he, he, he can miss them by a mile. But, but they started to rain from heaven right through the hoop. He makes six three-point shots and scores 30 points. How often is Oklahoma City going to be able to trust and depend that? Nothing. You, you're never going to get that yeah, again. There's only been two. Before Lou Dort, there have only been two guys, 21 or younger, to score 30 points in a game seven. You might have heard of them. One is Kobe Bryant. The other is LeBron James. Mm. Lou Dort is in that company now, Skip. That's going to be a trivia question one day. Oh, have mercy. So he is the reason they're afloat. Mm -hmm. They're in the game. And I told you yesterday – if Oklahoma City can somehow hang in this until the last couple of minutes, right. I'm figuring Oklahoma City is going to find another Correct. way to win. Yes. So let's get to that final possession, and let's look at what James Harden did. Was he pouting? What, what, did he go into his shell on defense? No, he's playing his tail off on defense, even though he can't scratch on offense. Right. He's frustrated and tormented, but now let's see this last play unfold. Here we go. Chris Paul, he's got nowhere to go, and he gives it up to Shea Gilgis. Almost he's got, got it stolen by Russ. Go. And all of a sudden, look at James. He's guarding. He was guarding Steven right. Adams, and he had to wait until the last split second, the last split second to leave Steven because if he leaves him too early, Shea Gilgis is going to just lob for a dunk. Look at this. James is guarding the center, and at the last second, he bolts Sprinter right mm -hmm. out of the blocks, and Again, who, who has been fouled the most in NBA history on three-point <laughs> shots? Who understands how to draw a foul on a three-point shot? James Harden. Right. He's the ultimate foul drawer right. on three-point shots. Well, conversely, he's the ultimate I know how not to foul on a three-point shot. Well, so me. look what he did. He went sideways. And, and he uses his left arm, but he makes sure he completely missed Dort's body. Well, he Skip, goes completely sideways to block it. The thing is with him is because he's left-hand yep. dominant, he's a left-handed shooter, mm -hmm. and Dort is right-handed, it's the perfect scenario. So he doesn't but, have but, to but run towards but, his but body. The, but the left is actually your off arm. Yeah. You, you'd think you'd go more with your right, right, but he knows if I go with my right, I'm going to foul him. More times than not, Skip, you're going to try and block the shot with your dominant, your dominant hand. Okay, I got that, but it, it it's... It's more savvy and sly yeah. to try to to bend, to the side. you know, to, yeah. to angle left a little bit and use your left to block it. And this is the hottest hand on the court. Yeah. Lou Dort has the ball in his hands, and number seven is about to happen. But guess what he had saw earlier in the earlier game? Mm -hmm. He taught, saw two situations. They got somebody in trouble mm -hmm. because they went straight on straight and they on. ended up fouling him. Yeah, I don't so, know if he saw it, but I, well, again, I, yeah. He, he, probably, he uh, probably saw it or uh, uh, he, heard about it, it's, yeah. It's highly possible. But That's to perfect. get a clean block yeah. with not even a hint of a foul, there's no body touch at all, and then avoid the throwback bounce, mm -hmm. although Dort had already stepped out right, of bounds, right. so he was already out of bounds. But, but again, this is James Harden. James Harden made a defensive play to save the game? Skip, you remember a couple of years ago, Manu got, got James Harden with the same he block. He got it from back with, blocking with but, the left but hand. That, that was all Manu yeah. ever did. <laughs> this is a yeah. new guy. This is new James. James Harden is what makes this defense go. Because if you look at Covington plays defense, P.J. Tucker plays defense. Now, Russ is not a defensive guy, but it's James Harden. R because, Russ will play hard. Because, yeah, Skip, your, your leader has to buy in. 
James Harden has to buy in and says, okay, I got to scrap here. I got to get on the floor and get some of these loose balls also. You just can't have two of your five oh on God. the floor getting loose balls. Yep. So when he bought in, as you mentioned, deflection, steals, blocking yep. shots, mm -hmm. now it makes it's contagious. Give, give him credit. Like I said, he found another way to impact the game, even though his offensive game was not there. And had he not made this skip, considering he was 4-15 and the way he shot the three ball, he would have been getting crushed this morning. I, and rightfully so. Okay, and guess who else would have been crushed this morning? <laughs> uh, if I look at the fourth quarter box score, his partner in, so Russ. to speak, crime, Russell Westbrook, in the fourth quarter goes one for eight. Yeah. How many wild drive shots just banged up off the right. went Westbrook off the rim, right. and that would have come under scrutiny. Yes, but James on defense saved the day. He did. And then I'm going to give Russ credit because Oklahoma City, the clutchest team in basketball this year, had one last inbounds from their end of the court right. with 1.8 seconds left to maybe create another three for who knows Lou Dort. And they can't get the ball in bounds. And Shea Gill just tries, and Russ gets a hand on it. Russ gets a hand on it first, and P.J. goes and yeah. snags it. Can I ask you a question? Okay, that's defense. It that's is. the Houston Rockets playing defense. They couldn't even get the ball in bounds. Yeah, you used two timeouts. Mm -hmm. You used two. Yep. And the best play you came up with was Steven Adams going away from the basket mm -hmm. at seven foot tall. Again, Mark Jackson was making the point. Uh, I think Tim Legler made it after the game also. It just looked like Steven Adams would wheel to the basket because they have nobody his size. They're, they're guarding him with 6'5 people. And you hear the thing, Skip. If you go back and look at it, P.J. Tucker is fronting him with nobody behind That's him what I'm saying. because uh, 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 Covington is way over. How in the tall is P.J.? Maybe 6'4"? Give him 6'5 like, just to maybe, be nice. Yes. Maybe? Steven Adams is seven foot tall. He's seven feet so there's tall. nobody behind him, and a six five is fronting a seven foot. I just kept thinking they're going to lob it yes! up for a dunk at the buzzer to win the game. Because oh, the tie the game, because yeah. it would have been tied. Oh, That's yeah. right. But but it again, the clock isn't going to start until he touches he the right. Ball. So if so you he lob got, it at the rim and he goes and snags it in the air, he he has plenty of time. One point one point two seconds, Skip. He can catch it and just because he's right there at the basket. Ooh. And that's what you come up with after two timeouts. You know. get your seven-footer going away from the basket. Yep. That's the only thing you can come up with. Skip, I thought if he's in the game, Steven Adams has got to set better screens than that, or he's of no use. Yep. You're, not, you're not really trying to get him the ball. He's in there because he's a big body and can screen. Yep. Those screens were some bull jive. Mm. So he, he was really of no use. You'd have came out better putting Dort in the game. Mm. At least you got another shooter because that screen, screen that he set, was terrible. You ready to fire Billy Donovan? Is that where you're headed? No, Skip, they had, a, they had a less than 1% chance of making the playoffs. I thought this might have been Billy Donovan's best coaching job, considering he got this team into the playoffs, got them to a game seven mm -hmm. with an opportunity to realistically win this game. I thought this might have been his best coaching job. Okay. I do not think this was Mike D'Antoni's best coaching job because I'm never sure exactly how much he coaches. Yeah. But somehow, maybe it was from James, this team morphed into a defensive-minded team. And again, they, they play this weird amoeba zone mm -hmm. where they're just constantly switching. You take Adams. Now you take Adams. Now you right. take Adams. Because nobody's big enough to, to take Adams. No. But they front him. They back him. They right. front him. They are constantly morphing into different schemes. Well, because he's not an offensive threat. Yeah. He's a type of guy, Skip, that'll roll to the basket, get a dunk. Yeah. He'll get a lob or he'll get a putback. So you're not really running offensive sets for him. So they don't really put a whole lot of emphasis. What's the likelihood? I mean, Chris Paul tried to one time say, get down on the block. I'm going to give it to you. And he, he, he shoots some kind of shot that wasn't even yep. close to going in. Yep. The next team, you do realize Anthony Davis can post up P.J. Tucker. He can shoot over the top. He can put it on the floor and get to the rack. So if you play him like that, it's going to be a whole different outcome. But last night, Skip, the, the Thunder had been so great in these situations. And this is what you – Skip, you dream of a situation that you've been great in. Yep. It's kind of like if you're in the spelling bee, Skip, you see these kids, they get a word that they practice and they start jumping. Skip, I know it. I know it. I got it. I'm going to win the spelling bee. Mm -hmm. Well, the Thunder, this is the situation that you dream for. 33 times in the regular season you've been in this situation, you come away victorious. But for some reason last night – and I get it. It's game seven. Chris, look, there's no, let's get down and put out the room, Skip. Chris Paul and Scott Foster do not like each other. Mm -hmm. 
They, they, they don't like each other. I know, but Scott Foster, hate, remember, James Harden said he shouldn't be allowed to exactly. ref our games anymore. I, I think he's might, he might be the most dislike official in all of basketball. And it's game seven because uh, I think Chris Paul lost another game seven in which Scott Foster is, uh, is officiated. But he gave him a delay of game. It's just, uh, Skip, do I think officiating had an impact on this game? Chris Paul clearly does. I don't. Because I think the last two minutes, they were playing football. Oh. Everybody was running over everybody, and I was like, oh, that's a foul. And they, everybody was looking around, and ain't nobody called nothing. And right before the half skip, you remember uh, Scott Foster called a foul on Covington in the backcourt. There's an official standing right there mm -hmm. looking at it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't say a word. Scott Foster come way in like you say, Mo, I got a foul on you, bro. And, and he called it with relish, <laughs> like, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so in the end, Mike D'Antoni used the ultimate cliche, and yet it's the first time I ever heard this cliche used on the Houston Rockets featuring James Harden. Right. He said, games of this magnitude in the playoffs, you win with heart. Yeah. I thought in the end, Houston out-hearted Oklahoma City. Yeah. Houston just played a little harder. It turned into a beautifully ugly basketball yes. game. It was kind of hard to watch, but but gripping for all the wrong reasons. It was turnovers and missed drive layup shots yes. and, and faux pas. And yet, in the end, Houston prevailed because Houston played harder on defense. And normally in game sevens, when it's close, it comes down to getting a stop. If we go back to 2016, Skip, it was the block. You've got to get a stop. You've got to come up with that one play. Mm -hmm. You've got to get 50-50 balls. And the Rockets got more of those. But the thing that they didn't do that OKC did mm -hmm. was that OKC turned the ball over. Remember in game six, they had 22 turnovers, mm -hmm. and Thunder took care of the ball. Mm -hmm. And they pounded them on the glass. Mm -hmm. This game was just the reverse. OKC turned the ball over. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the Rockets took care of the ball, and they only gave up plus three in the rebounding margin. Mm. Well, if you don't pound them on the glass, if you're not plus 10, plus 15, plus 20, mm. and so I already know what's going to happen. Mm. We go every game. You know, I do too. The king is going to be the king of turnovers in this series because he's going to get his pocket picked right and left. By who? By all the Rockets. Okay. Watch. Okay, okay. I want that energy now. I want that, yep. case, I want that energy. Yep. I want that energy because by the time, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, by the time we come back in here on Monday, we'll be up 2-0. Mm. Okay, I might bet a case or two on that. <laughs> oh, I think so. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.